No. All right, we're live. We're live. It's like I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I'm old. I was I like skimmed through the whole thing. Do you want to switch? Deep inside, I was like, don't switch, don't switch. I don't want to switch with you. I don't want to switch to you. One is the ash thing. If I wreck your dad's mustache, shoot right about the top of the I hour. I will never forgive myself. Top of the hour plus four. What? I will forgive you. I need. Well, I appreciate it. that. Actually, means a lot. Timer. Because I know I would've... he was looking at his pocket. I know my like, interest is good. What you're doing is on camera, right? I'm okay with this. <laughs> we about 30 minutes. We would have ended up getting him a new 5.0 Mustang, and yeah. we would have called. So we ready to start Ashton, this shindig? We would have. We would have dragged that. The flamey flame. The flame of flame of flame. A little bit. I switched you spots, but you guys sat me alone. So. Alone. Well, I was told to sit. Oh, oh you always do what you're told. Huh? You always do what you're told. Cabo. <laughs> alone, Cabo. Until I figure shit out. And then, <laughs> then when I figure out how I can bend the rules. I'm a real boy. <laughs> oh. There's that audio clip again. I'm a real boy. No, that's not the one. Hello, I forgot which one. I'm in danger. I'm in danger. I think I went to go cut that out one time, and I forgot to pull it. And then it just got lost, and I was like, ah, he'll say it again. I forgot. I was thinking about it when I was sick. I was like, oh, of your just fetal position. What's that? What's that saying that Mike always said I say all the time? It's like, I don't remember. I'm in danger. So that was me yesterday because I, danger. I made the, the standard mistake of taking pre-workout on like an empty stomach oh <laughs> no and so like i'm waiting and it's like you know 20 minutes and it starts kicking in normally right well 20 minutes and my gut started hurting i bet and so i'm just like i'm not even laying on the couch i'm laying on the ground in front of the couch did you do a full scoop or a half a scoop two scoops holy crap <laughs> you should only do like half a scoop mm. look at your size and look at his size Two, I mean, two scoops is a serving. Really? Yep. Yeah. For my stuff. I don't Holy know what you take. I, I do gorilla mode. I do uh, what I can afford. Mm. Half a scoop. <laughs> I don't do any of it. So, <clears throat> yeah, so there I am just laying on the ground feeling miserable. And so Cabo, we are both in fetal position this week. <laughs> yeah, Cabo, being Cabo is like, I know what will make you feel better. Me cuddling you. Cabo sitting on your face or trying to sit on your face because the, everyone feels better if they pet Cabo. Everyone feels better petting Cabo. Can confirm. Yep. He sat on my face, well, almost sat on my face when I was sitting on the couch tonight. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I kept Shoot, calling you. You didn't want to come over here. camping and they're eating something outside my tent or just licking dirt. I don't know. Maybe they're Marines. And out of nowhere, they get in my tent. And I have both dogs, mud all over the place, and Cabo's just like, oh, your face looks like a perfect pillow. <laughs> oh, that was it. Yeah, that was in the morning. That was in the morning because, like, he had he had, had a small opening. Yeah. And that's all they need to invade the tent. That was gone. Red Dawn with dogs. <laughs> I, all right, uh, let's do an introduction real quick. Hold on, hold on. Before the introduction. I got Because aren't we story. rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Okay. Fucking we're getting warmed up. Yeah. Uh, we I got gotcha. tons of batteries. We're Shit. good. We're okay. good on batteries. We, we fucking just do we'll do the thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Are you that cold over there? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All better. See, Drink you, more. There's two houses you can stay at. Yeah, if you had bought that car heart. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Do you need a bigger jacket? No, I got some whiskey. Okay. Whiskey oh. and story. So one one time, back when my buddy Hank lived up in uh, Colorado, Ooh. I'm staying in their spare Ooh. bedroom with both my dogs, and I I get up in the morning to leave, to because I was going to go buy donuts because it's one of those things yeah. where it's the day after you've done the trip you're going to wake up super early. Yeah, for know, no reason. For no reason, and just. Buy the most obnoxious thing yeah, at so, this time. So I'm like, I'm going to buy two dozen donuts. There was only five of us there, right? Makes sense. Two dozen. Everybody um, gets three. But but uh, both my dogs, especially Pearl, invaded their bedroom at the same time. 
Pearl was all up in their business. All up in their business. <laughs> wake you up, you. Wake up your mother. Wake up your family. <laughs> wake up your cow. And that's that's like Pearl's stick. Pearl is going to track people down. Oh, yeah. So whenever I used to go over to my dad's, that was their thing, is they would push his door open because it didn't latch, mm-hmm. um, and then jump on his bed and be all up in his business. Cabo would just be rolling on top of him, like oh, get onto goodness. his back and do the wiggles. The little zoomies, but it's all his back. Okay, I mean, now we can do the image art. You're giving me that look, man. Like, Way to ruin it. Man. Wow. Fucking funk oh. rusher. <laughs> like, hey, welcome to the podcast. Hey, do it now. Do it do, now. Do the podcast. Do the podcast now. I'm in well, danger. I thought we were in it. Like, you started talking, and then you're going to jump into... No, this is all our... Well, this is uh, name pending. This is all, like, our catch before we start it. Because then we go, hey guys, this is name this pending. This is name pending. I'm Keeper. I'm Mike Culberson. And, and I am Kelp. Us. Once again. Once again. Because you know. You can't get rid of me. You can't stop coming and you won't stop coming and you keep stop coming. And, and so ooh. I think it's in the 30s again. It, it's a little bit cold. My toes are frozen. You didn't need those toes. You don't need nah. those toes. Hypothermia doesn't kill nobody. There's a house right there. It's not hypothermia cold. We're not like out camping. All right? He's out here like, I'm in a third world country. I'm so far away yeah. from everywhere. I'm burning so many calories right now, shivering my ass off. Good. It's that beer belly you need to get rid of. We are It's more like you. ass fat. It's <laughs> ass fat. You're right. White people got either flat ass or just Assy fat. fat. You're saggy just ass. Big old fatty. Big old fatty. But we're going to start with... Mike's book reading. What have you read this week? What's interesting? Because so, we got the Legionnaire series right here. It's just one of the books, but great series. I love that series. Um, I didn't start the timer, so. Well, that's fine. I did. Did you? I looked at my clock. Oh, we still got time. Um, so I was reading the Honor Harrington series. Um, okay. And I got to... You were still reading that last week, too. Or I you, started reading it last week. You started week. reading it last week. I was on book one when we talked about it last week. And midweek, we talked. And I was I on was, book five. I was fucking dying of whatever sickness was going around. And I, I stopped on book nine. <sighs> you stopped. Hold on. Time out. Is it bad at book nine? So, yeah, book nine goes through a rough period because there's like... How many, how many books are in the series? Fifteen. Okay, so you think this is maybe like their midlife crisis with the series no it's just you know eventually it it happens with every military sci-fi eventually you get far enough along that you end up having to deal with politics right and so there was this was like their politics episode right and And you're like like, speed up two times speed let's let's move past this yeah let's let's step so i've i like paused right now um it was really book eight that was really the it started it yeah, it was really book eight, and then I, by the time I got done with book eight, it was there was a lot of fascinating stuff that happened. Don't get me wrong, but like that's not what I'm reading. It's this. not what you're reading it for. It was like, okay, I get it. I know the politics are needed for everything that happened, but I want to I want to get back to the action, the drama, what I started reading this series for. So then. I read... So this series is on pause. We're this, putting it to this the series, side for now. This series is going to be on pause, and okay. I'll cycle back around at some point, and then I'll finish it out, right? Because I'm curious how it goes. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. I mean, they have, like, I just looked it up. They have another, like, nine books? Planned. No, already. For, like, prequel stories to and 15, stuff like that. Oh, like prequels. So yeah. not just one through 15. But we have nine books for the whole series, prequels yeah. and point five. It's and, a, and some of them are like short short stories, and some of them bring in other authors to do writing and stuff like so that. So we touch on different characters throughout the whole thing. Right. Like, okay. Uh, but the other one is book 12 of the Behold Humanity series by Ralts Bloodthorn. Blood I don't, Bloodthorn. I don't think I, I the the author sounds familiar, but I don't recall. So this is this is a fun one. 
Uh, and I was thinking about how to, like, lead into this one. But, like, have you ever, like, played, like, D&D, and it's, like, you have the fun, kitschy, like, you know, the joke character? Yeah. And then, like, down the road, the joke character, like, has the most heart-wrenching scenes? The bard. Yeah. The bard. Or, or or you know, you're you're watching the movie, and the funny man, you're like, I like that funny man. Robin yeah. Williams. And then the... The funny man dies, and you're like... <clears throat> Rocco in uh, Boondock Saints. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, I'm torn up. Yep. This whole book has that... This whole book series has that feeling, because the series starts off real tongue-in-cheek, real, like... There are points of it where they're pulling from legitimate science. There's... You know, very sci-fi stuff, and then there's almost sci-fi fantasy stuff, right? Where we're we're out there, right? We're way fucking out there, and it's like you're not quite sure if this is like real fucking like fantasy shit or if it's just technology so far beyond what you can conceive of that it looks like fantasy, like magic. So, so the world is pretty. So you came so, over and watched me play a little bit of the Expanse, of the game, right? Is it kind of like that future world? No. Where the computers are similar and but Way it's so further. Okay. Like we're talking like twenty seven hundreds or eight thousand years past today. like humanity's like first excursions into space. So even further than that. <laughs> okay. Um and what I like about this though is humans are essentially the strongest creatures out there. Like everyone we meet, we end up kicking their ass. Not only that, but I like it as well because it has a very positive spin on humanity, right? It's it's it ex- that's a change. It accepts the fact that like humans are capable of terrible shit, mm-hmm. but we want to be good, <clears throat> and this is a very much representative of it. That's a change in a lot of book series because a lot of book series is like, oh, humans are are bad somewhere. Like, oh, we did all this bad and they just focus on the bad. But this, you're saying this focuses on the good of humanity. Yes. Okay. The be- a lot of the best aspects with acknowledgements to the worst aspects of us. So it's not just the whole, so Einstein was a teacher for a while and he did nine problems right and one problem wrong and everyone focused on the wrong. You're right. saying this book series focuses on the nine problems right. Yeah. Okay. And... You know, so it has this, like, interacting with alien species. And another thing I like is that they do the alien species well. Because the alien species feel like aliens. It's not like, oh, it's just a green guy, and it's a green guy. No. I mean, don't get me wrong. They they have emotions that we can relate to, right? They're, they're emotional. The man, some of them are mammal creatures. But, you know. But it also... The tongue-in-cheek portion comes from is because it makes fun of everything. Okay. Like, it pulls from 40K, Warhammer 40K. It pulls from, like, there's an entire, like, series of solar systems that are just for Star Trek LARPers. Ooh. Like, it, they, they're like, this ship is not canon, and this is why this ship is not canon. And people will get them like selves resleeved, and they'll have like the mentality of Kirk or the mentality. I have a coworker that has built every ship ever made in any fantasy show ever. Like three D designed it to spec, and he has all of them. He didn't take. He looked at the pictures through all of it and designed them to spec. So humanity has solved scarcity. There's no resource scarcity at all. No world hunger. They they got it. Heck yeah. Nano machines are to the point to where there's no longer a logistical chain shortage. Chain, chain shortage. shortage. Yeah. Well, you know, we so, have, yeah. Nano what? No. Nano nano machines. Nano machines that just fix the shortage issues across the board. Right, because it's just it's think of it like a black box, and it's like you can print out whatever you want. Am more ammo, you can do it. You know whatever. And they just make it there. Yeah. Like, on the front lines. I'm curious what that resource is that these nano technology just nanomites are just... Whatever. Throw rocks into just it, bro. Creating. I mean, it's got to be something like uh, Black Panther, where they, they mine some rare mineral, and that's what powers their weapons type of thing. You know what I mean? I, but I think that that's, like, just the 
base that's the surface that's not even <coughs> it's not even touching the deep we're talking about nanotechnology nanotechnology that like we just started using nanotechnology to fight cancer and it's still experimental and we're talking yeah. you know eight thousand years in the future you know this is past the point where we got into it with the ai and then we became friends with the ai every like most every alien species we come to in contact to we either wipe them out completely or we make friends with them and typically we try and make friends with them yeah why not if you can build your repertoire of knowledge and you can build your repertoire of resources and but i like it because there's not like one means of ftl travel there's like dozens of means of ftl travel what, what's ftl faster than light all right so faster than light is light speed is what we're talking about. No, faster than light. Faster so, than light faster speed. Faster than light speed. Okay. So I instead of light fuck years this life. <laughs> Do I? I thought you were saying fuck this life. No, that's, that's <laughs> why I was asking because FTL, I understand it's faster than light, but not everybody's going to understand what FTL stands for. Exactly, like me. Exactly. <laughs> so in My edumacated mindset. It's fun. It's because, you know, I'm, I'm saying that pulled from 40K. So they have space marines. Oh, yeah. Now they have... Neko, cat girl, covered in pink and yellow, only uh, pink and white, only communicate in emojis, space marines. Oh my goodness. It's so fucking funny, That's tongue in cheek. That's the comic relief. And, That's but just... even those characters are dangerous. No, they they are dangerous, but even those characters, you they go into like the history of why they are, and you're like, oh, this got fucking deep quick. Okay. And, like, there were, like, moments where I'm, like, on the edge of my seat, like, super invested. It's like, tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah. I can't read fast enough. Yes. It, it, it's, like, I never thought, like, book one, I was, like, this uh, is fun. This is okay. Yeah, We get to, fun. like, book five or six, and I'm, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I'm fucking invested. Mike's over here invested. sweating on his couch in his recliner. Next page, next page, I next just page. saw that this book had gotten released, I think, <laughs> yesterday, and I finished it. How many how many on this series? Just one? Twelve. Twelve? I might have to jump over this one. It's good. It's really good. I don't know. I don't know if it's in Audible yet. No, nope, well, I can't <laughs> read it. Everybody knows I can only read when someone reads it to me. Let me check real quick. No, but that's that's interesting. Like you talking about the history that they go into and how they dive into why these things are named one thing or another is just like you just throwing hints out there is like it's it's so cool because it touches on all of the like nerdy elements that you want, but it's <laughs> super badass at the same time. You're like, yes, stomp their head in. <laughs> that sounds like a good series. I might jump to that one next. Ugh. So that's that's my bit. That's Mike's book reading. <laughs> that that's that's a large one that's a good one though cowboys which cool i don't have anything against either team other than my dad likes the patriots so i don't oh good because that's spicy wood no it's spicier Ooh, i'm in danger <laughs> stranger danger <laughs> Woo! he beat that wood into a fire <laughs> i'm all ashy now <laughs> It's snowing cocaine. Uh, it's snowing something. <laughs> Holy cow. Ah, I'm burning. Ah, How I'm fire. <laughs> More wood. So More wood. You're happy with ah, your little ah, upper ah, shelf. Woo. All those you little that spurs going up. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a tad bit spicy, I'll not tell you. <laughs> oh, wow. I can see again. Holy cow. <laughs> But no, that, that brings to the conspiracy of New York, because New York owns... So when I say New York, I'm talking about New York NFL office that controls yeah. all of the refs. Headquarters. Yeah, headquarters. The refs are owned by NFL. Right. Owned loosely because they work for so part So there's no bias. But... <laughs> Technically. And the smoke again. But all the refs, not all, that's a... Cognitive complete, delusion? Well, no, me and Mike talked about it. That's a... Uh, Almost. <laughs> Holy cow! It's hot. It's hot. I'm trying to move it. There's, no, there's all a poking stick. All and most are a wood beater. Complete statements <laughs> for what is the word we're 
what's the word? All and most. Most. Most people do this. Is a we were talking about it. You try not to use most or all or every. When you when you say all, absolute. That's what. Yeah, we're not trying to do it's absolutes. Cognitive, it's yeah, it's cognitive not, distortion. Correct. Not trying to use absolutes, but a lot of NFL refs are lawyers. What? Dead serious. A lot of them are lawyers. Wow. Or were lawyers at a time. It's like, okay. So you look at this and it's like, who who knows rules and laws better? than to call it. Okay, well, lawyer would be good. There's a couple odd odd ends in jobs. Like, uh, I, I actually looked into this. Statistically, some are cops. Some are IT guys. And you have all walks of life when it... Some are a one... There's... Was it .001? I don't know how you get .001 with all the refs. But essentially, we have .001 person who owns a landscaping company. In four states. <laughs> Good for him or and, her. Oh, great for the person, whoever it is. It doesn't distinguish male or female, but that person owns that many. But they're all owned by NFL. Mm-hmm. So if, so this only, to me, adds the conspiracy that NFL is rigged more towards entertainment. But who are we keeping out of this? Like, how much bigger does this entertainment I mean, See, Let's I mean, compare it to the... Let's compare it to the wrestling entertainment business. Well, we've seen all this stuff that's come out recently about that. Right. And what do you, what do you think is going to happen with the NFL? I mean, eventually all all evil comes to light, right? Or in this case, uh, conspiracies come to light. You know what I mean? So the truth eventually gets revealed no matter what company, what what business you're you're a part of? If you're if you're running a conspiracy or you're running some backdoor BS, then eventually, but it's, it's going to get found out. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. You know what you sign up for. I mean, am I not wrong? But I mean, half the people that watch NFL, uh, no, the players are still the players, and same with WWE. Right, they're still the wrestlers. I mean, so, there's a lot of skill that goes into WWE that's underrated, right? Yes. Um, but, I mean, props to y'all because I haven't been contributing too much because I gave up on the NFL fucking, like, five years ago, right? Well, yeah, like, as soon as they started gave kneeling. up the ghost on the NFL. <clears throat> I just do college ball now, and realistically, college ball, you know, it's headed in the same direction now. It's getting there. They opened it up for... Uh, Sponsors and all that. Well, sponsors, and they need to do that for the players, but it jumped to a point a couple years before that where alumni were changing a lot of stuff. Alumni had a lot of say in it, which they should, but not to the level that they were having. Right. Well, I also agree with the the, the UIL, because college ball is all UIL anyway still, but UIL has laxed up on a lot of the rules as far as college ball players and them being able to be sponsored and receive um, financial benefit to playing in college ball whereas they couldn't do that before and if you did take that money then you were you were disqualified from playing and No, because the stars at night are big and bright, deep Deep in in the heart heart of Texas. Texas. This is name pending, continuing. Here we go. After post-intermission. Post-intermission. Are you ever going to give me intermission slides? I was actually working on it when I was sick, and Jess was like, what the fuck are you doing? Go back to bed. You're tired. I was like, I'm not tired. I lost my pen for two days. Stupid <laughs> Apple Pen. And all Dude, I see is... I have lost mine and I can't find it. And I'm not spending Dobby, $200 for another one. Dobby, the stupid fucking white crack cat, is just running through the house. And I was like, I'm going to murder your cat, Jess. She's like, why? I was like, this cat has my Apple Pen. That thing costs $150. Yep. That's stupid. No. Finally got the pen back. No chew marks. Just walking around. It's white. It's his, apparently. White cat. Everything white is his. That's a cool cat. Anytime I throw on YouTube and it's like Mario Maker or any Mario game, 
that cat is living right next to the TV. Follows Mario. Just... It's like crack cat. Speaking of which, I saw Jack wandering off into the brush earlier. It's cold. Your cat's crazy. <laughs> she fucking loves it out here, bro. I, I'll give your cat props. I have not seen a field mice. I have not seen rats. I have not seen anything that isn't another cat. So she's, uh, did I show you, send you the picture? She brought me a robin one day. I, you did send me, you texted me. It was like, I woke up next to this. <laughs> <laughs> I still the worst one. I'm pretty sure we've said it on a podcast before, but I'm gonna keep saying it was the rabbit. Yeah, Kale, did I tell you about that one? No, it wasn't even a full rabbit. So <laughs> I wake up from a dead sleep in the middle of the night to a child screaming, and I get out of bed and grab my gun and stumble around. What the fuck is that? And I go around the side of my bed, and there's a baby rabbit. Dying on the side of my bed. Aww. My my cat brought me a rabbit. Um, it I mean bless her heart. It thank means you. They love you. It's a gift. Yeah, yeah thank it's a you. Gift. Keep, finish killing it before you bring it to me, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least let me just skin it in peace. So she's only brought me three things though. She brought me a sparrow. She brought me a rabbit, and she brought me a robin. So she loves you three times. Yeah. No, well, you know, third time's the charm, right? Well, <laughs> she's you know, it's like three different gifts. You're a king. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, there we talking go. about kings, let's let's talk about South America. We were talking about a little bit off, like, a, a world plagued, a continent plagued of drug dealers, a continent plagued of corrupt Murder. politicians. So, you know, we've, we've talked about the Argentinian president. Oh, yeah, right? he's doing fucking He is doing works. fantastic. Pass, I love the man. Pass me that peanut butter and jelly since we're in America, <laughs> not, not that... South Continent, Murder City. <laughs> so, you know, South America has been known to be just this disaster land for the last decade, right? It's Rancid. Like well, not even the ramp. last decade, since the 80s. Yeah. But, and you know, of course, I, I conspiracy theorist Mike blames the CIA for that. What are you talking about? I just jumped on conspiracy for entertainment business in America. <laughs> like, oh, my cell phone. NFL, entertainment business, like, across the board. Kel's not ch- chipping in because he's doing God's work. He's petting Pearl. Oh, there you go. You can't go wrong there. You can't tell because she's behind the table, but she's over here loving life. That's Combo our... just popped his head up like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's one of our hosts. You can't go Why wrong. Why are you not petting me? You can't go wrong petting one of the hosts. They are listed as furry co-hosts. Yep. You can't See, go wrong Combo. petting a host. Any four of them. Come here, Pearl. <laughs> Pearl. <laughs> so, so anyways, yeah. South oh, America. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Come on. That's oh. where he lives now. And, and we're doing this. Come on. All right. So, the El Salvadorian president. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, fuck. I just had the thing. I had the thing. Uh, I'm going to butcher this because I do not speak this language. Let's go. Naib. A white guy speaking Spanish. Bacale? Gazunte. D- does El Salvador do, do Spanish? That wasn't Spanish. That was Gazuntai. That was German. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Anyways, so he's he's up for re-election. Talk to your native landscaper. He speaks Spanish. Oh my God! You got pearl. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> okay, so no Spanish from that side. <laughs> no side So this El game. Salvador. So apparently he got allowed to do another term. As president. What number term is this for him? Three, I think. Okay. Uh, there's and, been, and, and there... There's been, what, two U.S. presidents that have done three terms? Yeah, their, le- and... their legislative branch, like, voted it in. Or okay. uh, one of their branches voted it in. They I don't it. know. Okay. They voted for it, right? Um, judicial. I think it was their judicial branch voted it in. But he apparently uh, fucking... Like, apparently, El Salvador was, like, the the homicide capital of the world. Yes. Not that long ago. Yes. It and, just changed to Mexico or something. But. And he came down, and he was like, well, we're going to come down on the gangs. We're going to come down on, you know, all the crime. All and the so, gangs in his country? Yeah. All of them? Yeah. Okay, let's go. How many he, people is that? I, I don't know. But he said... 
Like one of the things. How many they... people in the country or all the gangs? In the gangs. I'm, oh, I don't know. But Cabo, I need the optics. Okay, there, you can't cover no my face. There's no number to pull up actual gang members. But continuing. But he, uh, so he he did some things, essentially taking away people's rights, like saying that the cops could go busting in people's doors without warrants no and breach shit warrants. like that. Yeah. Or no, yeah. No knock warrants. No knock warrants. Like stuff like that. He had, I think it was 70,000 arrests. Holy cow. And the courts only released 7,000 out of those people. Was it the smallest town was it Rising Star, Texas has like 10,000 people. My county has 27,000 people. <laughs> Both those counties together isn't the 70,000 people. Holy cow. So he, you know. The people love him because, like, they're suddenly not the homicide capital of the world. That being said, like, the U.N., a lot of these first world countries are getting sanctions against him because he's taking away human rights and this, that, or another. And he's like, guys, you were just bitching at me by how many homicides were happening in my country and I solved the problem and now you're bitching at me because I solved the problem. What do you want? Lesser of two evils. I can't juggle the fruit of evil and juggle human rights at the same time. It's like there there needs to be a give and take. So I think my if if I'm understanding it correctly, what he's trying to do is he's trying to f- do another term so that he can finish the job. And then he he like everyone asked him if he'd be just like a forever president and he was like I don't I don't, I don't want, want that. The same thing George Washington done. Yeah. Like Yeah. They were like, hey, George, do you just want to be our dictator? And he's like, nah, bro. No, I, I don't want to be a king here. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Holy cow. Could, could you imagine? He was like, all right, it's your third term. You're like, okay, they let me run again. He was like, screw it. I'm making changes. Everybody's saying, screw it to me. Throwing all these sanctions. Your place sucks. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not accepting this. Got it. I'm fixing this. And you just change. Culture shock to your own country. We're cutting off this. No knock warrants. If you're a suspected gang member, we're going to find you out. And he pushes through all the shit. 70,000 arrested. 7,000 were acquitted of all charges by so, the court system. So it looks... Currently. Currently 7,000. It looks like South America might be on the right track. No. And over the past couple of years in podcasts, we've even talked... is like... South America is really, really pushing towards being. I mean, there's no real third world country. Everybody has cell phones. Everybody has internet. Everybody has. Well, not everyone. You're right. There's some remote. Not even remote. Yeah. No, I mean there are villages in Africa that don't have internet still, and they're not that remote. Realistically, they don't have necessarily running water. Well, you so know, we talk like about define th- remote. So, I'll I'll talk about remote. Ro- Ooh, in English, bleh, 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 Tennessee and coming out. So I'll talk about remote. So we have South America, who their grid system for their electric system, they are on a pay-by system. So at any time, they can cut off your electricity. You're not charging your phone. Your whole, everything in your house shuts down. I have friends over there in South America that, or not South America, uh, South Africa, where it's like, and you're done. Your your hours of operation are from like eight to two, and that's when you have electricity. Period. Aside from that, you're glamping. You're glamping, and then we have places outside India, islands off India, where it is remote. Like India actually has a border around an island, because there is at this point third world country. At this point, they're like seventh world country. They have any time they've interacted with. First world individuals, missionaries, first aid workers, anyone trying to bring life to them, they've killed them. That's not true. Recently, as of like 2019. No, actually, there is, and there's video evidence of this, but like locals have been able to do trades with them. Trades, yes. I'm talking about bringing real world, our real world, like first world, real world, second world, <clears throat> bringing that to their island they will accept the trade for my research yeah it could be something different now it's been a couple weeks since i researched this because it wasn't well i mean they won't sit there and converse exactly well yeah they don't know our language there the last i saw was 
I think it was 2017, 2018, there was a first aid worker from um, the United Kingdom, UK, and he went over there with a group of missionaries, but he's been here since the 80s. He, he knows the people, and he's able to get close to them and shake hands, kiss babies, you know, the normal political stuff. And he's been able to go into their camp, and it's been videoed, and because they're going with him. Excuse me, Cabo. Well, the gentleman ended up dying 2018, 2019, shortly after this past visit. And from there, it got to a point that these people showed up again. Same boat, same crew, but they only they only wanted to deal with this one individual because they knew him. Which, I get it, stranger danger. And since then, India, the actual country, has put a border around where they are patrolling 24-7 for the safety of the individuals on the island. It is a, for us, it would be a federal crime. For them, it's a different type of crime. But you are not allowed to go in without India's approval. And it might have changed. I haven't looked up recently about what's changed with it, about the island. But you are not allowed to go for any care because I think when they went in the 80s, they brought some sickness. They went in the 2000s, they brought another sickness. And all these people died. And they are one of the last remaining of the whole pan... They're one of the last remaining Inuit population of the whole Pangea-type Australia, Africa, the whole continent. It's. Uh, I mean, that that's not true because there's still those deep Amazon... Well, correct. Tribes, but which were of, part of, of that's, this part of it's the. Oh, what, okay. Oh, well, nitpick Pangea. Why don't you? Well, no, they brought it up. What is that alarm for? I don't know. But essentially, this is talking about this specific area of the ocean. I think it's it's not Pacific. It's Indian. The Indian Ocean. This Indian Ocean, which you dive into the ocean and you see that it could have potentially been a landmass. And this island was where they ended up residing in when the waters rose. Historically, that's that's what the belief is. And this is where they stayed. Well, I mean, you know, there there are the the theories that we've lost landmass. And that's where, you know, some of the stories of the lost cultures come from and stuff like that. Oh, I, I love diving into the lost cultures. I mean, you want to talk about this this mass flood that went across... Somehow, every single, every single, there's not a single one that discludes a massive, a great flood, a mass extinction of flood somewhere. There's flood in every single one. The Mayans, the Aztecs, was the, I'm going to destroy the Tezpuka. It's like Indian or Indonesian. Greatest feeling in the world. Oh, Pearl? Pearl warmth? Oh, hands down. (laughs) I'm in Pearl prison. Pearl prison, yep. You're pearl trapped. You are a hundred percent pearl trapped. That's a pearl trap right there. By the way. <sighs> she like, found. You ain't going. She no found way. your chair in your lap, and you are her chair. She's like, and this is great, and she's completely content. Yep. <laughs> That's a photo. She's like, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't invite me up here earlier, asshole. <laughs> That's a photo. Actually, I think out of everyone, you now have had pearl trapped more than everyone else. More than you. Today, yeah. No, period. I don't think you've been <laughs> broke up that often. Not true. At the campsite, she sat in my lap because I sat in her chair. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Mike, can you can you just bring me all the alcohol so I can mix my own drink? And you're like, can, you can just tell me. I was like, I could. Or you could just. He's like, no, you can just tell me. The, the drink you made while you were Drunk as a skunk. <laughs> Holy crap. That was so potent. <laughs> I was like, I never felt like I was more. I felt so proud to be from Tennessee. I was like, I understand why Davy Crockett came down here. Because Tennessee's like, here you go. Here's a good drink. And Texas is like, watch us make it better. Yeah, <laughs> boy. More alcohol. <laughs> more liquor. I drank that. I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I'm not driving anywhere tonight. <laughs> but no, you're you're talking about the 
the president murder city and he's changing all these so things. i i actually think that that gives us a perfect segue into the other thing that we wanted to talk about because we're talking about alcohol okay and so i think this is the perfect opening for you oh you're right to talk was... about moonshine because Kel moonshine to be informed Kelt was talking about moonshiners earlier. Because so <coughs> I'm ignorant. All I know is what I see on TV. Okay, well, let's go. You are talking about moonshiners earlier. You are talking about something. How there's a big conspiracy about how the whole show is fake as F. So, what is about, um, there's also been Murder Incorporated. Do you think that's fake? Absolutely. freaking lutely I'm kidding. I think all the murders that happen on Murder, Inc. are, like, legit murder. But... Okay, as a Tennessee and growing up in Blue Ridge Mountain area for a little bit, what makes you think Moonshiners is different than Murder Inc? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, did you not go around to street racers for a little bit? I did, and so okay. Is, okay so is street racing not illegal? Street street racing is illegal. Okay, However, so the street race. Hey, how, you, you just how killed a light. No, I didn't. didn't. I did. Oh, well, how do you how do you go around videoing street racing if it's illegal? On a drag strip. Did they only do it on a drag strip? Absolutely. When you recorded, though. Yes. But did you not also go around with them with their daily life for a little bit? I did, but there was never any racing on a regular street. But was there talks? There were talks, but a lot of that is... So what? Okay. So what audiences need to understand about shows like Street Outlaws and Rea- um, uh, Drag Kings or whatever that show is on Discovery that the bald headed dude does, um, all the drama you see on TV is coerced by the producers. So Street Outlaws, when we when we went around, okay, so I I used to take a breather. Let us let us understand what you're saying okay. when when you were filming this. I'm a filmmaker. And uh in 2015, I traveled the United States with uh, a drag racer by the name of Mike Marillo, who is a resident of San Antonio at the time he owned uh Texas Jam Racing. Yep. Um and he's got a old school Fox Body Mustang that he races. We've right? talked about Fox Bodies. Yep. The last good year of the engine. Yes. Um you know, of what course year was that? that was ninety three, I think, nineties. Uh I think ninety eight, ninety nine is the last of the Fox Body. What was the last of them? I, yeah. what was the earliest? That's what I'm curious about. Continue though. They they I think they came out early nineties and they, they lasted about six years. So to ninety two to ninety eight or ninety three to ninety nine. We're all wrong. Nineteen seventy nine. So the Fox Body came out was the first Fox Body. Wait, really? It was the Mustang two. I huh. did Mustang not know. I I like you talk about WWI World yeah. War One WWI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Mustang II. It was a convertible, and it was also the first Fox body. It was their fastback edition. Okay, so it's I it, didn't know it's that. it's uh ah uh, oh words. okay. But he had a '90s model. So they had a fastback. Mustang had a fastback. Uh, woo, woo, tree where's, frogs, where's that which was, which right? came out shortly after the Stingray. And then that that transitioned into the Fox body. Yes. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> so you're traveling. Traveling the states. Native, right. Traveling the states, racing. Filming a bunch of racers, Birdman, Bodie, uh, ton of ton of racers. I can't list them all because I don't remember all the names. But, um, but the, the the whole point was we were we were filming what became the drag. Grudge Kings, I believe is what it's called. The the drag Street racing Kings, where they bet racing, and they win money yeah. at the end of the season, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we were filming that. Um, Filled a purse for the end of the season. Yeah. Yep. And so we were editing it. We had we had a slot on Mav TV to release it. And then uh, and then we got shut down because Discovery was coming out with theirs, right? So um or for whatever reason. 
I, I don't know the real your, reason. Your theory is that it was because of Discovery was coming out with theirs. Right. Which would be a valid theory. Right. And they have they have the money to shut down anybody that's trying to come out. I mean, this goes into trademarks. Uh, yep. There's certain things trademarked. We could list them off and then we'd run into issues. But, but the reality of it is I've met most of the guys on Street Outlaws. And one of the things they said after season th- was after season three, none of them wanted to continue on. And and they didn't make any money, really. They were making, I don't know, about $100 an episode up until season three. And you know what? That's actually that's understandable because was it the fat electrician was hit up for Discovery for what, 180 an episode or was it? No. 780 an episode no well it was, it was like it was like it was pocket change it was yeah it was like 700 there you period. go 700 dollars for an episode with the expectation that he would fly out to california and yeah he all would... expense paid on him and then he shoots then they pay him so pretty much they don't even cover his airfare right so, basically yeah so that that <sighs> checks out because i mean after normally the first two seasons of you're talking about a real once know. the show makes money back then the people that are actually in it start making money you got 5 minutes oh, um so what once you start making money after your third season is is when you really start making money doing these shows However, they didn't want to continue on because the producers had pitted everybody against each other to create the drama that was never actually there to begin with, right? So it's like on here, we all get along, but if there was a producer behind scene, they would be shooting out shit to you, to you. To use against me to create that drama. What are you talking about? To get me, the audience me involved. And Mike don't get along with everything. <laughs> we talk. You talk about any unless you have clones of someone, and even with clones, there will always be a disagreement between people. Yeah. Right. But you don't necessarily see it on camera. I mean, and you'll see in a future episode of this, we'll have opposing views, and we love opposing views because we can discuss and talk about it, our differences and that's important is and i don't want to delve deep into this but like discussion not argument but discussion yes. is discussion is the biggest point me. not not argument if you can't hold a discussion <clears throat> or even a debate not to prove someone else wrong but a a healthy discussion or a healthy debate a proper debate not current days debate right to Hey, Mike, this is where you're wrong. And this this is where I feel you're wrong. Right. And then he refutes it with, well, this is where I feel you're wrong. He's like, okay, let me, let me think about that for a minute while you continue your speech. And, and if, we'll, if y'all go back and forth and eventually you sit down and you're like, well, we're just hammering the same points. Well, let's agree to disagree. And yep. then we'll move on. Right. And, you know, and, and that's that's the way it should be properly done. But in a lot of these shows that you see on TV, it, it especially reality shows, Housewives, it's all producer pushed what, drama. It's the drama. What can you? Who can you pull in to continue watching? Exactly. I mean, honestly, I, I saw a comedian talk about this the other day, actually, and he goes, and he is a Hispanic uh, comedian, I believe, and he goes. You know, if 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 you called it something like, it's the guy from Breaking Bad, the uh, DEA agent. He's he does this stand up comedy thing, and he's talking about now he's done with the show, and he has nothing to do but sit around and watch TV with his wife, and all she watches is Desperate Housewives, right? <laughs> and and he's like, a That's better funny. name for this would be White Drunk Women Fighting Over Shrimp. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, that would catch my attention. Then I know what I'm getting myself into, and I'm watching, you know, some drunk white bitches well, yeah, fight over some shrimp. I go home, my wife's watching, was it Sister Wives? or I always call it Sister Brothers. So, so can I aside this? Oh, yeah, let's go. Have you you've seen like HGTV or whatever like the House Channel? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen the ones where it's like real estate agent like leading a couple through a house oh, to like purchase? 
What it's do you want? like I eat crowns for a living, and my wife's a school teacher. We yeah, have no, a it's budget like, of two million dollars. He, he raises bees. Right. <laughs> She's a school teacher. Our budget is two point five million dollars, and you're like, what the fuck? How? It's like. I How could you afford that? Job, you drug. And my wife's a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> it's like we have four point mil, four point whatever million dollars. It's yeah, like, and 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 it's like, where are you getting your drug money from? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you watch some of these, and it's like, oh, well, you have two hundred k or one whatever your budget is. It's like, okay, we're gonna spend the other. What really pisses me off about HGTV or the house fixing shows that are on those types of channels is. When they go in and they say, we've got a $20,000 budget to renovate my kitchen, bathroom, basement, et cetera, et cetera. And they come in and they perform some kind of freaking miracle and they make it like this extravagant million dollar renovation for 20 grand. And well, I'm like, on. I'm about this to is some bullshit my... right here. He did a stand-up where somebody in the audience had the exact same name as his wife, and he states that in the stand-up comedy special. That's what it was. You're right. Yeah. No, I know Keanu Reeves had issues with his wife, and there was someone else that died. Which is crazy because, you know, Keanu Reeves... We live? We're live! We're live. Intermission See, that's what I wanted you to say earlier. We're live. We're live. Yeah. <laughs> because normally I say we're live, and then you follow that up with the higher pitch one. We're live. And I gone. only know this because of how many videos I've edited. <laughs> I was thinking, it's like I'm looking back at all these thumbnails. I'm looking back at all these things. And I was like, okay, so, so <laughs> I'm gonna touch on this, and it might touch you a little bit. So, Mike, one of these, one of these podcasts we have, we're chilling in his kitchen. Let me fix this, Mike. So we're chilling in the kitchen, and Mike goes, it's time. I'm getting older. And he pulls out nose trimmers. <laughs> so, and I didn't think about this until about do a that? day, two days ago. <laughs> no shit. I thought about this. So I was like, Mike has watched so many fucking videos of him. And he was like, is that mustache? Is that <laughs> nose hair? And he's like, I've seen so much of myself. I need nose hairs. Was like, you You want to talk about? Metro, you want to talk about someone that's looked in the mirror too long. Cool. And then Mike's like, I've seen fucking 12 hours. We're on what? Episode 15? 15. So soon soon be 15 hours of myself. Yeah. And you're like, donkey getting it. <laughs> Hopefully it's fending off whatever stupid shit. Yeah, fucking combat donkey out there taking it. Shoot, you throw a donkey in there. But I'm like... Mike's over here is like, I've seen enough of, of myself. I need to fix this. Because we brought up, what was it two or three episodes ago? Washing your face washing before your face. the face podcast. Because I did that this time. Get the oils off your face. I've, I've, I did it. So I have a charcoal mask about an hour before you get there, my house. And if it's at my house, I normally do it when I get home. And I put a black charcoal mask and I completely cover my face and I peel it off an hour later. And I was like, that's good. Peeled off. My kid fucking laughs at me. She thinks it's hilarious, even at her year age. Because you're black facing. Uh, realistically, I am black facing. Yeah. But it takes all all the crap out, takes all the oils. and it, The blackheads, all that stuff. It yeah. does help. It was like, I didn't realize how much makeup, quote unquote, helps in video until I watched it. And me and Mike both go, <sighs> bro. We have some oily freaking faces. Dude, because there's been some videos I'm editing and I'm looking at it. It's just like sheen, 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 sheen. And I'm like, Ugh. You also might have had the lights too bright too. So it, I mean, it, it could have been a multitude be. of things. But all I know is it was just like cover girl <laughs> shine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I know Mike brought it up one time and I was like, so I got this charcoal mask. <laughs> I'm going to start using it. I have three bottles because at Bath and Body Works, is like a three. You buy one, you get one free and one half off. And I was like, bro, game. My wife goes there all the time. Let me build up rewards. Let's go. I haven't been to a Bath and Body Works since 2007. So <laughs> when I Jess broke up with a girl that made me be Metro. <laughs> Jess used to work there. Like, no shit. She used to work there. So every, every time it's like, oh, this new... 
this new flavor or this new yeah. scent. Bro, I have a tubware. And when I say tubware, I'm talking about like it's a, like six foot long by foot deep <laughs> by <laughs> three feet wide. Like my wingspan, I'm six foot tall, <clears throat> is six foot. I have a six foot by about two and a half foot of candles. <laughs> it was like, trust me. You Eventually have, you'll burn them. You have a smell you want. I got you. I got you. Like to the point that we'll go to some, we'll go to Fredericksburg, Texas, and Leatherwork Candles has all, they have some great candles. She's like, oh, this candle. So I have candles that I'll burn in the garage because it smells like leather. Yeah. Or it smells like, like hard. It smells like man. Realistically, it smells like man. <laughs> Oh, you scared Cabo. Oh, Cabo. Way to hurt one of our co-hosts. Yeah, the first. I asked co-host. permission first, though. God, get that right. You saw it here you first. Scared Cabo. We do have it recorded. It just depends <laughs> if he'll make it. <laughs> right. You just cut, cut that permission just part cut out. It, out. <laughs> it was like, wow, how dare you? You are a Why? horrible person. You're a horrible person. <laughs> you me know feel what? You're going to burn in that fire. You're never making it on the next podcast. <laughs> made so, make me feel speaking guilty. Of sense, my, my dad, my dad's untimely death, got me back into using ash incense. Daddy? Yeah, Ash Daddy. I love a proper incense. I really do. So back in. You did it. One of the first podcasts where you burnt an incense and you're like, oh, I just got this. I think it was from Ash Daddy. Yeah. And you burnt it. I was like, bro, your house smells pristine. Like, like it smells fucking awesome. If I didn't have the the delicious smell of Fabuloso in my house right now, which I love the smell of Fabuloso. Kel hates. He yeah. wants to. He I think hates Fabuloso, Fabuloso smells like butthole. See, you know what? But he's also the whitest yard Mexican you'll ever meet. Yeah. But you know what? He does pretty good yards. But I do love a good fabuloso. In the uh. You wake up and you're just like, it's clean. Yes. See, I've been military too long with my family to the point that fresh alcohol, like fresh alcohol cleaning. Oh, I woke up yesterday after being sick for two days. I was like, that's clean. To the point, it smells like a medical facility. <laughs> so I, I broke my – because I used to bleach everything. Like I, I don't used bleach. To clean, I, I used to bleach. clean with bleach on everything. And then I was doing some reading, and they're like, you know, cleaning with bleach on everything is pretty bad for you. And it, I was like hmm. – No, not – it's pretty toxic. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I need a good alternative. So white vinegar. White vinegar, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's my alternative. I do a half and half of white vinegar, and it fucking sterilizes the shit out of stuff. I'll use bleach for my toilets, but it, I'll use white vinegar for any of my other white appliances. So, yeah, I mean, I, I use it for my sinks because they're white. I, I will never forget, there was, there was a uh, GI party going on when I was in AIT, and I was, like, platoon leader or something, right? Um... And so I went from room to room with a bottle of soft scrub and I'm spraying soft scrub in fucking people's sinks. And I was like, now take a sponge and scrub the shit out of that and fucking clean fucking immaculate sinks. Every one of my troops, immaculate sinks, bro. I hated that. I hate. So I made, I had a line number for staff in the air force, which, okay, I'm about to make E5. I'm in charge of people. I have to start looking at these things and I'm, I'm starting to inspect other people's dorms and it's like, oh, well, make sure you do this. Make sure you do this. It's like I hated inspecting people's dorms because it had to be immaculate. It was stupid. I hated it. It's just like doing your floors. Did y'all ever have to strip and re-wax your floors? <clears throat> I had yes, I did. I did that. Holy hell. I mean, it would take us six hours to do a 12 by 12 room. Six hours to strip the wax off, sweep, mop, reapply, and let dry. So Air six Force hours. went bougie. So we got Army, Navy, Air Force, for those that don't know. We got three different branches here. 
We're working on getting a fourth, maybe a fifth if Coast Guard cares. But you know, are they a branch though? Well, they're paid by the Navy, so well, the no, Marines. they're actually homeland. They're not part security. of the DoD anymore. Yeah, they're homeland security. Yeah, they got removed a few years back. Yeah, they're homeland Holy security. Shit. You know, is we, Space Force Homeland Security? We need a fourth. No, Space Force was originally supposed to be its own branch, yep. and the Air Force fucking shanghai them to being a baby brother, just kind of like the Marines are to the Navy. Yeah, the same way, same fucking way. Which is why we need a crown eater here. I would love to have a Marine on here, but again, love to have a Marine on here again because the Marine uniform they're wearing now. We talked about this. I don't even know if we posted this. Dude, the Marines uniform now is gay. No, no. We're talking about the Digicam Desert. The Desert Digicam. Guess who paid $14 million for it? United States Navy. Air Force. What? The Navy, at that point, because the Air Force was like, we don't like what you pushed out by whatever company pushed it out. It was like, that's not what we requested. Navy was like, Oh, we'll take it for, I think it was like seven, eight million. And Marines were like, ten million dollars. We got it. Navy was like, we're out. The Digicam the so different colors. The Digicam Navy's current were or was currently wearing 2018, 2019. I haven't caught up with Navy. Navy's like green and black now. Uh, yeah, they have the green, black, light green, yeah, brownish. Yeah. They have it that is, now. I think it's it's either that that older um like uh it's not digicam it's um Listen, it is let's still digi- just take it all back to BDUs bro so i'm jumping into this because we're going all these colors of digicam because the funniest part is these digicams are jumping back to 1980s bro 1980s BDUs but instead of being camo patch we're going BDU digicam crap, which it actually makes sense with because of the the plethora of first world country utilizing um, drones. It makes perfect sense. So I saw an Israeli guy in uniform here in San Antonio the other day, and he's wearing digicam. And to me, I was like, "Oh, that's a Marine." He turns around, has a full on beard, and I was like. He's a Muslim, okay. And I look at all his insignias, and I was like, "Oh, okay. He's a ri- he's is- he's Israeli. Okay, cool. He's at the Institute of what was it? it's the DLI uh, Defense Language Institute. Yeah, whatever. So he's becoming a linguist. Yeah, he's he's a linguist. And I was like, okay, that's really cool. Like that's awesome. I love that we are branching out to. I think it's like forty seven countries now. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that. I could be off on numbers, but. 47 different countries are able to come here and we all learn together, learn different languages to be translators, lack of better terms, translators. And he's rocking what to me as an American sees it as, oh, that's that's Marine Digicam. But then when you look closer, it's like, oh, that that's not our Digicam. Right. It's almost like it's almost like the, the members of the UN are all starting to wear the same type of uniforms. That's not by accident. No, no that's not accidental no. at all. But if you're a part of the UN, then you, you match with other UN members, other countries that are part of the UN, so that there you know you know the difference between an ally and an enemy. Yeah, I mean it's the it's the definition of a uniform, right? right. The reason why you have a uniform. That. It kind of stops that uniformity, accidental friendly fire. Right, so type. that you know who your friend and Who's enemy friendlies. is. Who's yeah. yeah. All right. So this has been name pending. This is name pending. I'm. You know what Mike says. I need you to fuck that like button. And as I say, throw a comment down below. Let us know where we're at. Hit us up with something. Kelt's been hanging out with your us. Hell yeah. And don't forget hanging to subscribe. Hanging out with your us. Hanging out with us Woo! here. Woo! Ding, 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 ding. My phone but, is ringing. And this phone's ringing. But this has been us. Name pending. I'm Mike Holverson. And I'm Keeper. And that's Kelt. <laughs> Peace.